Today, I, I want to just, I, I've got the simple goal of I want to begin the process of stirring up the passion in the church. The church is called to be a passionate organization. It's, it's called to be a mighty institution. It's called to be a missional organization. In other words, we have a mission and we go after it. And, and I just pray and I hope that I will always be a part of an electric community. I want to be around passionate people. Have you ever had a job where you're, you're, uh, you come in, you're excited, you got the job, you're thankful you got the job, but someone that has been working there for so long begins to tell you how bad the job is on day one, and they start trying to tell you how to slack and all the ins and the outs and who's horrible, and pretty soon by the end of the day, you're like, I don't know if I want to work at this job. You know, where before you were on your knees, you were fasting, you were praying, you were hoping, you had your whole family praying, you know, and by the end, you're like, I don't, that person's low expectations has poisoned your own expectations. I pray we don't have a church filled with people saying, I, I don't know, well, you, you should, you just, just, just sit down, wait, wait five years before you ever pray a, a faith-filled prayer. I hope we don't have a church that, 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 that collapses itself into mediocrity. I hope we don't have a church that allows itself to just slowly get weaker and weaker. I, I pray our, the people that have been here five years are more excited now than they were five years ago. I pray those that have been here 15 years have big vision now, just like they did back then. Our church is going on 31 years old, and let me tell you, the best is yet to come for our church. Its greatest days are still ahead of it. God has still more for it to accomplish. God is going to bring us. You know, it's interesting. After 30 years, we were able to rename this road to its original name, One New England Way. I can't help it. I think some of these things are prophetic. I pray all of New England drives up this drive, and they come and they get fed, and they get nurtured, and they get challenged, and they get led, and they go back to their homes and their churches and their communities with a great expectation for awakening. Let me tell you, we don't want just a normal go-to-meeting Sunday simple church. Our name is too big for that. We want an awakening. We want a revival. We want a movement. We want something passionate. We want something big over the top. That is what we are expecting. Can you say amen? And so one of our core values as a church is it goes like this. Expectation is our approach. In other words, the way that we show up is with great expectation. And you might say, well, show up to what? Everything. Everything. I pray when you show up to your crew, you bring the most energy to that crew. I pray when you show up on team night, when you come in on Sunday, so, you know, so many people have been here serving since 7.30 in the morning. They do it week after week. And you know what I love? They always bring their very best. The A team is always bringing the A game. There's great expectation from our church. I pray that's who we are. I hope you're looking forward to Sunday on Monday. I hope you're thinking about it. I hope you're praying about it. I hope you're inviting people to church all week long. I pray you're looking for opportunities to bring up church. You know when you, maybe this has been a while, but you know when you really liked someone, you, you kept trying to figure out ways to insert their name into conversations no, you don't remember middle school? Okay, all right. I pray that you look for opportunities to put Jesus and awakening into the conversation. I pray it's not quiet, silent. I pray there's a great expectation about you, expectation for the church, expectation for what God is doing. And can I say this? I pray there's great expectation for your life. I pray that you don't live a, a laissez-faire, whatever will be, will be life. I pray that you have a great hope even for what God is going to do in you and through you in the future. Can you say amen? amen. I, 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 I think the problem is if we're not careful when we go to church, and, and you could be going to church three months, three years, 30 years, but if you're not careful, you can quickly put your faith into autopilot. And you can set it and sit down. You're not going to die. You know, you're not going to go to hell. You're not gonna, you know, it's not, your, your faith's not going to be totally dead, but it's not living and active. It's not sharp. It's not moving forward. 
If you're not careful, you can put your faith on autopilot and slowly, slowly your faith just goes to the lowest possible denominator. It just goes as low key as possible while still being alive. Like a fire that's not out. It's got a little bit of embers, but it's not out. But it certainly is not a roaring fire. Certainly not hot. I pray that that is not your story. I pray the fire gets seven times hotter. I pray it gets seven times hotter. I pray at some point the fire turns from man's fire to God's fire. I pray even when you don't feel it, I'm going to keep pushing because I know at some point here the fire is going to be overtaken by God. I pray you bring great expectation to your life and to your future and and to all those around you. Can you say amen? Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Turn to your neighbor and say, he's preaching right to you. Some of you didn't want to do that. Turn to your other neighbor and say, he's preaching right to me. You know, I, 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 get, I get the problem is sometimes it's, it's, a, it's, it's maybe difficult to expect great things because we feel like, like that, that's for kids. Like, like kids get excited about the day. Like kids get excited about what's coming up. Not us. We've been through some stuff. You don't, you don't know some of the things I've seen. Life's difficult, bro. And sometimes, and sometimes to have faith is, is almost foolish. You know, sometimes to, to expect is difficult when you've been let down so much. But what I want to encourage you is to be a person with great expectation, even when you are let down. Because let me tell you, it is so much better to have an expectant life than a cynical life. I don't want that cynical anointing on me. I don't want that cynical approach to life on me. Even if things don't work out the way I thought they were going to work out, I'm not a genius and I don't know everything, but I'm going to have faith in the one that does know everything. I'm going to keep expecting. I'm going to keep hoping. I'm going to keep believing. And I, I would encourage you to be careful about the voices that you allow to speak over you. Be careful about those that have an anointing for anxiety when they speak over you. Be careful. On, I'm telling you, some of you, the most supernatural thing you could ever do is get off Twitter and get off Facebook because you would come away from that anointing of fear and that anointing of anxiety. And you turn on, you're watching the news and you're saying, oh, I receive this fearfulness. I receive this anger. I receive this hatred. And then, all, then you turn off the TV and you're like the Hulk. You know, and they say, what happened to you? I'm always like this. I, <laughs> I think there's a better way to live. I think there's a better way to live. I want to live with expectation. I want to live with passion. I want to live with vibrancy. I want to live with hope. I want to live with faith. I want to live towards the future, not in the past. I want to move forward to all that God has for me, has for my family, has for our church. I pray that you allow yourself to begin to move in a mode of expectation. And we see Jesus begin to put the disciples in this frame of expectation right away. When he's about to leave, he says, now, I, I'm, I'm going to leave you, but don't worry because I'm gonna send a helper. I'm gonna send another called the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is God. It is the spirit, the presence of God. And he comes and he partners with us to accomplish all that God has given for us to accomplish. And this is what he says, but before you receive the Holy Spirit, I want for you to wait in Jerusalem. Wait, wait before you receive. Culture says, go and get, go and get, hurry up, make it happen. It's on you. You better hustle. But Jesus says, wait and receive. When you mix those two words together, you know what you get? You get expectation. Waiting to receive, I got expectation. Like, like those of you that have, have been pregnant or, or those of you that have been expecting, you're waiting to receive this gift. And, and for those nine months, that's what it's all about. You're painting and you're gathering and you're throwing parties and you're talking and you're reading because why? Something's going to happen and I'm, I'm preparing. I'm getting ready. I, I've got an expectation. I'm expecting. This is what Jesus is saying is before the church does anything, have some expectation for the Holy Spirit to work with. Wait in expectation. And, and, and it's just such a powerful thing 
to wait in expectation. It's such a powerful thing to engage your expectation. I'm telling you, it affects everyone around you. My wife and I were recently just hanging out one day in Boston, and we were looking for somewhere to grab lunch. And as we were walking by, this one restaurant had a huge line coming out of it. And we said, well, that's, that's where we have to go, right? Because if there's a line for that food, that shows me there's expectation for that food, so we got to get in line. And we waited for 10, 20 minutes, and the line didn't move at all. And so we said, let's just go find Korean food somewhere else. And so we went in, but the next place we went in, it had no line. We looked around, we said, uh, let's just go to Shake Shack. We're good. I tell you, there's, there's, there's something about expectation that when it's on you, it begins to get on everybody else as well. Expectation is something that you can bring, that you can bring personally that will affect everyone else corporately. It's a powerful thing. And this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, I want for you to wait for the promise of the Spirit of God. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. But why do you need strength unless you're going to get something done? Unless you're going to make something happen? Unless you're going to push? Unless you're going to press? Unless you're going to persevere? If you're not going to push forward, you don't need strength. Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you strength, but make sure you engage your expectation of me. Those that wait upon the Lord receive strength, and then it's time to get to work. Come on, how many people here want to be a part of an expecting church? I'm just saying, I just want to speak it into the atmosphere that expectation is going to be our approach as a church to every single thing we are a part of. Let me tell you how you need to come to church on Sunday morning. Number one, you need to come to church early. Number two, you need to come to church fired up. You need to say this over yourself. I bring my own expectation. I bring my own expectation. I don't know if you're pumped, but I'm pumped. And I'm pumped enough for you and for me. And let me tell you, sometimes people don't know how to bring faith to church, so you have to bring faith for more people than just yourself. I pray you come to church, you show up early, you show up with expectation, you're ready for Sunday. I, I pray when you come to team night, when you come to crew, when we're part of I Heart My City, I pray we show up with an excitement that is palpable, an energy that affects the atmosphere, that we literally have a different vibe than many other places. You know what I'm saying? I want to have more vibe every Sunday than opening night for the Avengers. I want it to be exciting in here. We're ready. Something's about to happen. People are about to be changed. My life's about to be changed. Come on, God's about to speak. You got to know what happens every single Sunday. Healing's about to happen. Salvation's about to happen. Lives are about to be changed. Eternities are about to be redirected. Mindsets are going to be changed. Lies are about to be broken off. And what can I bring? Expectation for all of that to happen. This is something we can do. I pray we're a church that engages, that engages with our all. Hey, listen, this is why we stand in worship. And I just want you to know, this is going to be the church. We are going to be all out worshipers. It's just who, hey, leave your New England in the parking lot. <laughs> I should put that over the church, right? Leave your New England in the car. You can pick it back up after you get out of one New England way. But while you are here, we're going to bring our very best. We stand in worship. We sing in worship. We lift our hands in worship. I'll tell you, in the, during worship, I, I look back. During the third song, all of the middle here, you, you guys were lifting your hands and worshiping passionately. I think that is an incredible thing. That's saying, I am here. What is lifting our hands? It's just saying, I surrender to you, God. I give my all to you, God. I desire you, God. You can do it like this, like this. I don't care. But you need to lift. There needs to be a physical engagement of expectation. God, we're ready for your presence. Lord, we want to taste Jesus, we want to touch. We want more, more, more of you, Lord. I want to challenge the balcony. When you get here, balcony, I want you all standing during worship. Just because you're separated by 15 feet doesn't mean you're at a different church. You are with us all the way through. You are culture setters. I want the balcony to sing loud over the church. I want the balcony to praise, to worship, to lift up. 
Now the people in the balcony are saying, I showed up to not do any of that. Nope. You are commissioned in the name of Jesus Christ. You are leaders and you are to sing to heaven. You are closer to heaven. So you need to bring the anointing down. Come on, we got a choir up here, but we got a choir right here. Now, some of you might not be able to be miked like the choir for the benefit of all, but you can sing out. We are just going to be a church that loves church, that loves Jesus, that loves each other. I pray you have great expectation for people around you. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is why God's brought us as a community, unity, commune, unity. We are in this thing together. And he brings us together to say, look, when you don't have the faith, you don't have the passion, I can bring it. And when I don't have it, you can bring it. But together, we're going to keep stirring each other up to love and to good works. We're going to continue to stir each each other up on, on Sunday morning, on Sunday night. We are going to bring the best out of each other. Amen? You know, sometimes in a church this size, it's difficult for one or two or or even 10 pastors to pastor everybody. But you know what you can do? You can help be a pastor. You can speak faith over people. You can encourage people. You can see the best in people. You can tell them what they're good at. You can pray with people. You can show up at moments that matter to people. But whatever you do, don't slip into apathy. Don't slip back and say someone else will take care of it. I'm just tired We're all tired. (laughs) All the parents said amen. (laughs) Let me tell you how you get untired. You just got to start acting. You know, it's amazing. I can't tell you how many times I feel like, oh, man, I I don't know. I don't know if I can can make it happen. Another service or or, or team night. And I just feel like maybe I should, you know, just sit this one out and rest. But let me tell you, that's always the enemy trying to say, don't bring your expectation. Whenever I get to the church, it's like I just put on my Iron Man suit. I got a lot of Marvel illustrations today. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I feel like, I don't know if I can do it. But then when you show up at church, you start getting around the faith people, bring faith. You walk out of that place differently. And you say, thank God I was at church. Thank God I pushed through. Thank God I persevered. But, you know, I think the problem is we are surrounded in a culture of low expectations. It's just what has seeped into the world all around us where People don't believe big about themselves or others or, or, or it's almost even not cool to believe. We, 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 it's almost not cool to have hope. You know, it's, it's cool to point out what's wrong and what's bad and what's dark and what's dim and what's horrible. But it's not cool to say, but I believe that God's got, or, or I, I believe or that, that God's got more for me. And I, I want to push forward. The problem is almost all of our culture just wants to settle And so when I come up here and I say, don't settle, I might be the only voice speaking this to you. Don't settle. Expect more of yourself. Sometimes you need to say, I'm better than this. I screwed up, but I'm better than this. Jesus, help me because I'm not going to make this mistake again. I'm not going to settle in this. I pray we we don't try and put our faith into a little formula, a little math equation. We put in the bare minimum and try and just say, but I'm saved. More than saved, I want to be effective. I want to be a witness. I want to be powerful. Let me just read off these things about expectation. Great great expectation engages the greatness of God. Expectation, you have to know this. It's not fake, it's faith. It's not fake, it's faith. And sometimes, even if you declare expectance, even though you don't feel it, that's okay. Because having expectation is a principle, not a feeling. I expect despite how I feel, and I know that God's going to come through and my feelings will catch up, but I will never allow my feelings to lead the pack of my life. Expectation is not fake, it's faith. Expectation is what we bring personally that benefits everyone corporately. Expectation is based on who God is and what God's done before. I know who he is. I know what he's done. That's why I have expectation. Expectation produces dedication. Expectation produces preparation. Expectation gets in the air. It gets on people. It gets in the vibe. It gets on people's hearts. And expectation is a prayer in action. It's a prayer in action. You might pray, God, I pray this is an awesome Sunday. You know, you're going to be able to answer a part of that prayer by getting your expectation up, showing up early, connecting with the people around you. Even for other people, you know, and it's amazing how much people will 
be formed or become formed by the expectations of those above and around them. It's amazing that you can not only become more yourself, you can bring the best out of everyone around you simply by saying, I believe in you. I believe more is in you. Come on, let's do this thing together. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. And it's something many times, it's like a, 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 a muscle that we never use. It's, a, it's an aspect that we, we never engage. I, I'll tell you what, I want to lead an expectant church. Can you say amen? I want to lead an excited church. And, you know, some of you that are a little bit older here, you might say, well, I'm not like those kids screaming, shouting, and dancing. That, that's fine. That's all right. Expectation is not necessarily being loud. It's about being passionate. And, and some, I'm not just saying we're just going to be loud. I'm saying we're going to be passionate. And sometimes passion looks like perseverance. Sometimes passion looks like wisdom. Sometimes passion looks like longevity. So you might not jump into the middle of the dance circle. That's fine. But will you be there? when you're needed. Come on, will you help advance the kingdom of God? I'm preaching way over my time, so I got to end. But we got church next week. Don't worry. I'll, I'll finish the rest of this next week. I, I, I just feel like, I just feel like, like I want to, I want to be a part of a church where, where we really do unashamedly, unabashedly believe that he is who he says he is, that he's got good things for us. And even when I don't feel it, God is greater than my feelings. And he knows everything. And so I believe in the promise that he's going to send his Holy Spirit. And he sent it upon them and he sent it to us. I believe in the promise that God's not going to let us do this alone, but he's going to bring the kingdom of heaven to the whole earth through us. Can you say amen? amen. Come on, God is for you. He's not against you. He's going to partner with you. You know what I love Jesus' response? Because they say to Jesus, they say, well, Jesus, all right, we're going to wait. Well, what are you going to do in this time? Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel while we're waiting? And, and it's amazing. They still don't get it. They have extreme repetitive ignorance. And, and it makes me hopeful, you know, because we're repetitively ignorant. Everything about the statement is wrong. They're saying, are you, Jesus, going to establish the kingdom? And Jesus is saying, no, you are. I'm going to do it through you. And they're saying, are you going to do it right now? And he's going to say, no, I'm, I'm doing it for eternity. And are you going to establish the kingdom of Israel? He says, no, I'm going to establish the kingdom of heaven upon the whole earth. What's Jesus saying? He's saying, I'm going to do something very powerful, but I'm going to do it through you, with you. I'm going to use you. Jesus wants to use you. Can you say amen? And so they say, well, are you going to do it right now? And here's Jesus' response. And I'm going to end right here. I'm going to end right here. Man, I'm going way over. Okay. All right. You good? You good for one more minute? One more minute. This is going to help you. It's going to help you. They say, Jesus, are you going to do this? Are you going to do it right now? Are you gonna? And this is Jesus' response. He says, number one, it's not for you to know. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons. And, and you know what I love about this? Sometimes God doesn't work on your timetable, but that doesn't mean he's not working. doesn't mean he's not working. He might not do it in the, in the time frame that you would have wanted or wished or thought, but that doesn't mean he's not doing it. He's saying, look, I'm going to establish my kingdom and you're not going to figure out how and when. That's for God and God alone to know. By the way, I just saved you a lot of money. You don't have to go out and buy those books on the blood moons. You don't have to go replace every 666 and try to do the math formula and watch all those weird YouTube videos. No one knows. No one knows when the end is coming. Is that good? Or is that helpful? No, you guys are like, I don't, I don't watch any of those. Okay, good. Jesus is saying, look, only God knows. So you don't have to worry about when. You just have to worry about being faithful. Because some people are so nervous. When's the rapture going to happen? Who knows? It doesn't matter. You have to be faithful right now. And the rapture's not going to happen. All right, number two. We're going to go through it all, and then we're going to see Jesus at the end. Good theology. We'll talk about that another time. Number two. Number two, Jesus. See, this is when I should have ended my sermon. I should have I just ended it. Number two, this is what Jesus says. He says, not for you to know, but here's what you're going to have. You will receive power. And I just want you to know this. You'll receive power. I know some of you feel powerless and the enemy wants to oppress you and make you feel like you are absolutely incapable. You're not enough. You're too little. Your failures are too great. But the Holy Spirit says, I'm going to bring power. And I don't think that has anything to do with a microphone or a church service. I think it has everything to do with the ability to live out the abundant life 
that God has promised for you to see it through to the end, to be faithful, to make a faithful family, to leave a legacy, and to be who God created for you to be. The Holy Spirit will give you enough to make it through all the way through. Can you say amen? Why? Why? Because you will be my witnesses. That's all we have to do. We just have to tell what we've seen God do in our lives, in our community, in this church. Where? To the ends of the earth. What's our mission? To show Jesus to the whole world. We're called to just be faithful with the power and the resources God has given us to the entire world. And we're going to do it with a great expectation. Can you say amen?